It's no figure in American politics is a deeper understanding of keeping the faith during the most difficult times than our next guest. Joining me and Mike by phone is the likely Democratic nominee, Joe Biden. Mr. Vice President, how are you doing this weekend? Hey, Nicole, how are you? Um, we're, we're, doing, we're doing fine. We're better off than most. We, Jill and I are together, and our kids, uh, Bo's children, my deceased sons, they live only about a a half miles of crow flies. They come over and sit out in the backyard. We sit in the porch and talk. We're not allowed to go out and hug them and kiss them, although we're going to do an Easter egg hunt tomorrow. I just got finished coloring the eggs. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> and, uh, so, uh, and, and my, uh, and my other children are scattered around the country, my grandchildren, but everyone, thank God, seems good. What is the role of faith? You've been so public about how your faith has helped you through tragedies that you've shared, you've grieved in public. But a lot of people, thousands of people have lost loved ones to COVID since it's gripped our country. Thousands of people um, are scared, scared of getting sick and scared of losing their jobs and scared of, of what's ahead. What, 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 what can we do? How, does, how has faith helped you? What advice do you have? Well, I've always, you know, I know it sounds strange, and Mike knows this, I feel a little self-conscious talking about faith, but I've, the terrible things that have happened to me, a lot have happened to other people and worse, uh, but in my case, they've all been public, so, uh, you know, it's, it's harder, I find it at least more difficult to grieve in public, but, um, but I found, uh, you know, there's that great phrase from the philosopher Kierkegaard, who said, faith sees best in the dark. And for me, it has been my solace and my security. Uh, when, uh, when my wife and, uh, and daughter were killed uh, in an automobile accident when I first got to the U.S. Senate and uh, my two boys were badly injured, uh, I kind of lost my faith for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, but the boys, uh, my, my boys sort of brought it back. And um, what I found was that... Uh, I found uh, solace in the knowledge of the belief, and I'm not proselytizing here, um, that uh, for me it was, a, it was a place where I could go, a private place. Uh, when I go to Mass, I'd sit in the pew, and, I, and it was like I was uh, all by myself, um, even though the church could be crowded. It was a place for me just to, just a comfort zone where I was. I was raised in a, in a, in a Catholic family, not that it wouldn't be any different than any other family, and uh, went to Catholic grade school, and the, the church just sort of became a foundational place for me. It just was a place of security. It was like, you know, uh, uh, you know, saying the rosary for me is like, I guess for some people, uh, meditating. And uh, so I found found a lot of faith and, and the belief that uh, that uh, they're all still part of me. They're inside of me. Bose, my soul, is still there. And, uh, and I, uh, so I, I found it that that it, it gave me purpose. Um, and I think for most people, and they find it different ways when they go through something very, very difficult, it's very hard to find purpose, a sense of purpose in your life. And uh, for me, um, it was, I was founded through, through my faith. I wore out a lot of rosaries, but. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Can you, you know, I, I cry every day when I go running, so my little boy doesn't see me. Can you understand people that don't have faith right now, can't find an oh, explanation sure for what, what, no, what do you, no, what sure do you do. say to us? Well, you know, look, I, I, I don't, uh, I, I don't, uh, ex I don't think you have to have faith vis-a-vis -vis religion. Uh, I think you have to have faith in terms of what you, what, what you're part of. Uh, you know, as, as you run and cry, the thing I just remind you of, and you will be reminded of, is that beautiful son you have, yeah. the little boy. <laughs> um, w w whatever it, look, I remember when, uh, um, you know, everybody used to say, and Mike talked to me about this one time, uh, that I, after my children were, were injured in, in that accident where they lost their mother and their, daughter, their sister, I started commuting every day from D.C. because I didn't plan on staying. And I've made over, they tell me, over 2 million miles round trips on Amtrak. Everybody thought, well, isn't he a nice guy? He goes home to see his kids every night. No, I didn't go home to see him. I needed my kids. Yeah. They're the ones that got me through it. I'd go home and lie in bed with them, scratch their back, no matter yeah. what time it was. And, and uh, you know, we'd say three Hail Marys and go to sleep. But yeah. they'd tell me about their day. But I knew it was a, and it wasn't so much faith. It was, it was a connection. It was, it was, I, I'm, not, I'm not making it more spiritual than it is. It was it's just a connection. And uh, they're the ones that got me through. And what I feel terribly, terribly badly for is those people who've gone through 
a lot more than I have and don't have anybody. They're doing it themselves. They're real heroes. Every day they get up, put one foot in front of the other, and they go out. And for the longest time, I, I didn't uh, – I, 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 I just lost my faith. I didn't, I didn't think how could a benevolent God do something like that kind of thing. I'm sitting at my desk here, and I have a – I have a uh, I've told Mike this before. There's a cartoon I have that was from my dad. I guess I was feeling uh, badly about myself one day long after my kids had uh, – my wife and I had died. And it's a cartoon by a guy named – by D-I-K Brown, B-R-O-W-N-E. And he bought, went up to a Hallmark shop, and he bought it, and there's two frames in it. And uh, in this glass brass frame, it's about eight inches long and a couple inches high. And it's a picture of Hagar the Horrible. He used to be a mm-hmm. cartoon character. And uh, you see his, his uh, dragon ship has crashed into the rocks, and he's standing on top of the rocks, and uh, the, 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 his ship's aflame. And he's yelling up to God. He yells, why me, God? And a voice in the next frame comes down, a voice from heaven comes down and says, why not? Yeah. Why not? What, what makes you so special that it's not going to happen to you? But I just, I just think that it's, uh, you know, I find, uh, you know, finding purpose is what got me engaged in a whole lot of things that I do. And, um, and uh, but I think it's just, uh, you know, it, but it doesn't even have to be. I'm going to get in a lot of trouble with religious <laughs> folks out there, but it doesn't even have to be religious. It's just something that gives you the ability to go inside yourself and just, just find some peace. Mike Barnacle. Mr. Vice President, uh, tomorrow is Easter Sunday. We've gone through Good Friday. We've had Passover. Many churches and temples have been closed. But to your point about faith and purpose, you can have both faith and distinct purpose brought to you from your faith without ever entering the doors of a cathedral. You can have that with just carrying the rosaries in your pocket, with, with carrying the rosaries in your pocket each and every day. But I get the sense from walking around and going around, as you know, I don't do much other than walk around. Uh, is, <laughs> there seems to be an empathy, an empathy drought in America today, an empathy drought. Yeah. What do we do about that? Well, Mike, I know maybe, you know, I'm, I, I'm characterized, a, uh, you know, that I'm a congenital optimist. But I think we're going we're gonna to come out of this god-awful thing we're going through now. And I think people are going to have a much greater appreciation and a sense of what everybody else is going through. I don't think there's a lot of people in uh, in some of the neighborhoods I live in now or that you all are in that uh, really ever, you know, walked out and, uh, you know, thank that guy who, uh, who or that woman who kept the... Uh, the drain in the sewer from a clog, and so mm-hmm. your so your basement didn't flood. I don't think anybody thought much about the guy who's stacking the oranges and the produce in, in the uh, you know in, 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 in the fruit counter uh, you know at the supermarket. I don't think people thought a whole lot about the, the most incredible people in the world, the nurses who are mm-hmm. they're and the angels in heaven. They're men and women who are nurses, and I think all of a sudden there's a there's this dawning on people that there's no way they could make it without these quiet, silent heroes. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm really proud. I know this sounds corny, but I'm really proud to be an American. I talked mm-hmm. about with Mike, and I think you too, Nicole, about I thought we had to restore the soul of America. We're mm-hmm. seeing the soul of America yeah. now. We're yeah. seeing so many incredibly decent, honorable people doing things, in many cases, they never thought they were going to do, just stepping up. And... Um, I don't know. I, I think, you know, we're the only country I'm aware of that's, uh, and whether we've created or inherited a great crisis has always come out of it stronger than we went in it. And I really think this is one of those moments. I think it's one of these revelatory moments where people are going, holy God, I didn't realize that. I mean, that person does all that and gets paid $9 an hour or $7 an hour. You mean that person risked their life and lost their life because of that? And there's a guy. When, when's the last time I stopped in a firehouse and said to the guys driving the ambulance, hey, guys, thanks. I don't know who the hell you are, but thanks. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's just, you know, and you see it now and you see people responding to it. You every, see people every responding day hear to us. it. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Silver linings. Vice President Joe Biden, yeah. thank you so much for getting on the phone and spending some time with me and Mike. We're grateful. 
Thanks. And by the way, my my Walter Mitty dream wasn't to be a president; it was to be uh, Rodriguez. <laughs> ball. Next time we'll, we'll make sure you guys ever laugh. <laughs> I, 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 Mike, Mike, I held an arm. I held an arm. I could play center field. I could put it on the line from center field. Okay. Anyway, yeah. all right. Yeah. Thank you. I have believe a, it. Have a great See night, everybody.